up, Marin from Roach Fab. It's going to be part 26 on the mongrel. So, job for today is going to be uh, sorting out this inner tub area and transferring it all the way to, to meet up with this outer panel. So, um, I need to clean all this up and then trim it off so that it's dead straight. And I'm going to try and sort of just bend it about and reshape it to get more of a uh, curve similar to what we've already got here. Trim this to match that and then we're going to fold this lip, fold this edge, put a lip on it so you'll have a little lip facing outwards. And then we'll just have a flat piece of steel that we can spot weld on this outside. A couple stitch welds on here. So um, pretty straightforward, just cut this off and then I use this, so you just stick a pen through there and then you can transfer the um, inner arch to the outer arch. Precision instrument, copyrighted to Urchfab. This is how we do like the escort rally cars uh, when you want to tub the arches. So you can just it and it gives you your line and then you mark about 10 mil down from the line fold it up from that point and then your folded edge will, will match up exactly with this and you can run like a nice flat you know tub first thing i need to do is clean all the crap off here i've got some holes that are going to need welding up i've got a big hole there where i plasma cut through it accidentally Right, so all that I've just done is kind of roughly shape that into a curve that matches this curve a little bit better. But it kind of comes up and forward, so this line needs to come up and kind of uh, sweep up and down a little bit. So we'll use the uh, we'll use the Urchfab custom copyright tool. And this pen is too small for the hole. Obviously the trick with doing this is to make sure you keep the uh, tool at exactly the same angle. So probably the best way would be to put the car level and then you could stick a spirit level on the edge of this. When I make this cut, I need to make it between sort of 10, 15 mil below this line. So I've just eyeballed this so that it's got a nice gradual curve to it and uh, it's close enough to what's behind it and we'll be able to just make the two match. So now I'm going to scribe my line which is going to be my fold line all the way around and uh, I'm going to go for 12 mil.
So actually I think I'll change that. Give 10 mil. So now we've got a scribe line and um, all I'm going to do is, is just use a hammer and dolly and just beat the shit out of it all the way along that line. So uh, I'll flip this up the other way and that way I'll be hammering down. It's going to be a lot easier. So the only thing I might need to do where these curves are is just put some little light relief cuts in there just so that it doesn't misshape this too much but I'll see I'll see as we go. So the goal initially is just to try and get that like a break on that line. So you're just going to gradually work your way around a bit at a time. key to this working well is to really like drive the corner of your dolly onto the line and, and start with like getting the edge broken on the line rather than trying to like fold it all over straight away. Just get that initial line sort of dented in. So now we got that, we just got a, you know, we got a really straightforward uh, fix now, it's just, just a, a flat, flat sheet of steel, straight in there, spot wide around there, a couple of welds around here, and, um, and you might find that it might pull the panel in um, as you fold it over it might pull the panel in different ways um, if it if it really flattens a piece out that's got a bow in it you can just put a couple of relief cuts in this edge and then once you've put your um, flat in you can just weld those relief cuts up and you'll get your you'll get your shape back if it does flatten this out or you can just sort of hammer and dolly it out like I did there, it kind of pulled that in a little bit. But um, that gives you the idea. Right, so all I've got to do now is cut a strip. Length of that. And then you could just bend it, I've got like a little roller thing so I can roll it, get a nice curve going. And I use uh, I use 1.5 again, so it's super strong. And uh, yeah, this is the right way to do it. Um, this is if you're doing a Mark II Escort rally car. Uh, this is the better way to do it. Having that edge just puts a lot more strength back in here. What you'll see a lot of people do is just cut it off and then put the sheet straight up to the cut edge and then weld along the cut edge or they'll just tack it and put a load of sealer down it um, you're way less likely to warp anything when you weld if you do this and um, you know that probably took me like 10 minutes to dolly that like that you know it's just it's the way to do it
I've got this roller. I made this roller probably, I don't even know how long ago, a lot of years ago. And uh, probably the only tools I owned when I made this was a, a drill at a Sibora 180 MIG welder and an angle grinder and some crappy hand tools and I was working out of a 6x8 wooden shed in my garden. I was uh, employed at that point so just messing around and I made this because I wanted to make banded steel wheels so I needed something for rolling the bands. So um, this had a bottle jack underneath here and uh, as you jack the bottle jack up it would just move this up and down and you could, you could adjust how it would roll it. I had to get these uh, machined up. These bits slot out so you can um, slide this up and out if you need to. And then those just slot back in. I should uh, clean it up properly and paint it all. It was just chucked in a pile of scrap upstairs. It's not really the way to treat your homemade tools. Um, so I, don't, I don't know what's happened to the bottle jack, so I just have to wedge something underneath to get a bit of a... Uh, Magic. So for this bit here, I will probably make a lip that comes off of the back of this bit and then comes down on the inside because um, it needs to be able to sit flat on this edge here. So that that lip will disappear there and, I'll, and effectively sort of start on the inside just to give this a bit of strength on this uh, bottom corner. And this will probably get trimmed down a bit more. So um, now I've got to do the exact same thing on the other side. The left and right sided depression just gets me down. Alright, so I'm not going to bore you with. Uh, the exact same thing on the other side. But my plan over the next few weeks is to um, just just upload a lot more regularly. So it'll probably be shorter, shorter episodes with maybe just a day's content in it. I know a lot of people want longer episodes, more content, but it can't please everyone. So, but I will try to make sure there's something of value in each episode, like something you can take and use on your own car or project or whatever. And yeah, judging by the comments, I know that everyone seems to want me to drill loads of holes in the back panel, so I'll get my drill out later and blast a few in there. And yeah, a few people said about doing a center exit exhaust, which would be cool, but I want to use a factory, not factory, but like a factory fit exhaust system that will um, just bolt straight on and don't want to have to fabricate anything. So it'll have like a 
you know, it's going to, I think it came out on the right, might, maybe it came out on the left actually, but it'll have, you know, just a like cut out with the exhaust sticking out here. So yeah, I'm just going to carry on and do the same on the other side and uh, not going to bother filming it. So that's going to be it for today. So cheers for watching. See you on the next one.